All right, so we talked about collaboration. We talked about the ways in which collaboration can fall apart uh, a little bit. And we talked a little bit about collaboration possibly being successful through taking certain actions. But what I want to do is actually talk about what successful collaboration looks like. And we can do that by examining three criteria. We know that a collaborative effort is successful if the outcome that a group, a collaborative group was trying to achieve is successful, of course, you know, if they actually achieve the goal that they set out to do. If that team actually grew in their capabilities, uh, if they were able to learn new things that will make them as a whole much more effective. So that's the second criteria. And the third criteria is a meaningful and satisfying experience. Every team member should come out of a collaborative effort feeling fulfilled to some extent. Let's get into each of these a little bit more. We consider a project to have a successful outcome if a team was able to complete it within the time and budget allowed. Um, now, there are various levels of success. However, um, it's possible that a project goes over budget. It's possible that a project might take a little longer than it's supposed to. Maybe um, the time or budget constraints can't be actually played with at all. You can't turn it in late. You can't go over budget. So you have to deliver a partial outcome. And those may not necessarily be failures. They may not be full successes, but there could be some level of partial success that's going on. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because oftentimes it's very important to learn from things that went wrong, to learn not just from the successes, but also the things that didn't go as planned. So it could be possible to, um, you know, even if the outcome wasn't fully successful, uh, sometimes it, it is better to have something than nothing, even if it's not the full thing. So that can be good in and of itself. And there might be ways to sort of just work around that. Um, and, you know, it's also important to learn from the things that didn't go exactly right. You can learn what about the way the group approached the project made it go over budget or over time or something like that. What made it so that the group couldn't entirely finish the project, maybe if those time and budget constraints can't be extended, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, the textbook defines a successful outcome very black and white. It's a binary between success and failure in their eyes, but I would argue that you can have partial successes and even those partial successes and even the failures can be valuable. Um, but regardless, uh, a successful outcome, however you want to define a successful outcome, would be one aspect of a successful collaboration. So next we have the growth in team capability. Um, now I recognize that some some students uh, watching this may not have had a, a sort of real life environment outside of just school where, um, you know, they've been put in a team and have worked together for a very, very, very long time in that team uh, in the high school or college environment. Um, teams might last as long as one single 
present you know one single assignment in a class or they might only last for one class or something like that and maybe you try to stick with a few people who happen to be in the same classes as you as you keep on doing different projects in different classes and stuff you maybe you find some people that you enjoy working with and you keep working with them and developing your skills that way maybe you know all that kind of stuff happens but in school uh, whether that is high school or college um, those of you who have who uh, haven't like gone and worked in collaborative environments outside of high school and college um, may not be aware that teams will often last months or years outside of all of that, no matter if those teams are within a business or within a community organization or stuff like that. You might end up with people and you might just be staying with those people for a very long time. Also, this is definitely part of why it's so important to treat people in your group well, because you might be around them for a very long time. Um, so it's good to, ha to build up good team dynamics with the people you're working with. All that being said, uh, outside of school, and I recognize that uh, some of the students watching this may know this from firsthand experience, but your, your teams might last months or years outside of school. Uh, because of that, um, as you practice collaboration over different projects, you're going to increase your team's effectiveness. So the more you work together, the more you practice these skills of doing work and getting feedback and improving on that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the more you also practice, you know, the act of looking over your teammates' work and giving feedback yourself, the more you practice all of those skills the all together, the more effective your team is going to be. You start to learn uh, who is good at what. You start to learn how to give all that kind of feedback to each other, you learn how to communicate well with each other, and you become a better team that way. So some of the things that the growth and team capability can sort of facilitate are, you know, you can learn what processes do or don't work. If you have a specific way of going about a problem that works really well and you see that kind of problem again, you can repeat that process and be relatively sure that the uh, problem can be solved. On the other hand, if you know that a specific solution doesn't work very well for a certain problem, then you won't try to repeat that pro that solution again for that particular problem. So you start to learn more about things that do and don't work when you're going about trying to uh, achieve a goal. You also learn who does what best. So when you are dividing up tasks, when you're actually working on a project, uh, it makes it very easy to say, you know, hey, I know you do this type of analysis really well, and we agreed that that type of analysis is good for this project, so I'll give that to you. And hey, I know you're really good at collecting this type of data. Do you want to take this type of job? Um, and so on and so forth. Uh, it makes for a very efficient team because uh, people who are really good at achieving certain goals uh, you know, sort of sub goals within the overall goal, they can just get to work doing the things that they are familiar with, doing the things that they do best, and have a really good final product. It's also establishing linkages, so the ways that tasks between members can sort of work well with each other. So maybe that uh, data collection links really well with the analysis in the previous example that I gave. That would be a linkage. Uh, a person can do that data collection and then send it over to the person who does data analysis right away. When you have these kinds of linkages like that, when you're able to work sort of side by side with your other group members, 
uh, when you know like who has the inputs you need, who uh, who needs the outputs that you produce, um, all that kind of stuff, those linkages make for much more effective communication. And then of course, providing the perspectives that others need. You know, you start to know better who has what experience and you might be able to preemptively ask for advice or something like that before even needing the feedback process or maybe during the actual feedback process saying, well, hey, I know this person in the group has this kind of expertise. Uh, could you take a look at this and help me with the feedback process of this whole thing, right? So that's all aspects that the growth and team capability can facilitate. And then, of course, a successful project feels meaningful. Uh, everyone who is involved in that project feels like they've really done something to help, whether it's uh, helping the business that they work for, if they feel like their project was important to help the business make money, or if it's helping the community that you are, you know, that you live in, uh, that you're trying to assist. Helping your the, the people around you can be a meaningful, satisfying experience in that way. So a good collaborative project will feel meaningful, which means that the team members who are in that project feel like they've actually done something. They, they feel motivated to continue doing work. Workers who find meaning in even mundane tasks are much more invested than workers who do not find meaning in those tasks. Um, I would say that idea of meaningful work is why um, we still have people working as teachers because it feels very meaningful to help teach people, to help people learn new things that they can use in the future that will benefit them uh, as they go on in their lives. That is an incredibly meaningful feeling. And I'd say that's why people are still teaching, even though the pay is not all that great. Having that meaningful work also builds camaraderie between members of the team. So they, because they feel like they all participated in something meaningful like that, they're going to feel more connected with each other. They're going to feel good about their group and the work that they are all doing together. All right, well, that is the aspects of successful collaboration. That's what successful collaboration looks like, how you know when a collaborative project has been successful.